Father, we thank you today for your goodness and for your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness unto us. We thank you for your mercy that is new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto us. So we ask that you would speak to us, Lord, that you would give us exactly that which we need. We yearn for your presence in a very special way. Do that that only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. There is, there is a word from God, and a word from God makes all the difference in our lives. So many times we get a lot of words from a lot of different places, but a word from God will make all the difference in our lives. Um, so I encourage you to have an ear to hear today what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen? You'll turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter number 10. Luke chapter number 10. Glory to God. Luke chapter number 10. This is a passage of scripture where the 70 that are commissioned are sent out. And this is after the 12 have been commissioned to be sent out. And now these men, these 70, are commanded by God to do a work for God. It's an interesting thing when we find ourselves right in the middle of being obedient to God and having to answer a call of God. How many have a call of God on your life? Amen. So many times we don't recognize it and we miss it. But these 70 recognize the call of God on their lives. And I am perplexed at some of the challenges that we have. In the beginning of chapter number 10, it talks about how the instructions were for them to be sent out. There must be a significant enthusiasm that is needful for today. You can't be called of God without enthusiasm. Okay. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. You can't be called of God without a significant amount of enthusiasm. Because you're going to come against things that are going to try to steal your enthusiasm. And the enthusiasm, enthusiasm means in my 1878 Webster, Noah Webster's dictionary, it means God within. Uh-huh. It means God within. So if you don't have any enthusiasm, you don't have. And so people that are sent from God must have enthusiasm. I said people that are sent from God must have enthusiasm. And your enthusiasm cannot be contingent upon somebody rubbing you across the back of your head. It can't be, it can't be credited upon somebody patting you on the back. Your enthusiasm got to come from where? It's got to come from within. And if God ain't there, you won't have any. Because if there's anything that the enemy can do to stop you, he can stop you. And if there's anything that is wrong with the church today, we have lost all kinds of enthusiasm. We ain't excited about nothing. And so the church needs to get some God within. Enthusiasm. When you meet a salesperson in the store and they have what? They have some enthusiasm. You want to buy even though you don't even need it. Just because they smile or just because they're excited about presentation. And so enthusiasm is important. If you are sent from God, get a smile on your face. Ain't nobody interested in no sour grapes or looking like you eating prunes and, and all messed up on the inside. Get a smile on your dial. Yes. Choose to rejoice. Right. Make, get an attitude of gratitude. Yes. And when you do, it will be, it will be contagious. Yes. People will see it. Yes. 
But the saints is just mad at the world, Lord. I'm just trying to figure this out, Paige. Ain't nobody interested in a God that is doing that to you. And so Jesus sends out the 12, and then he sends out another 70. And he tells them, don't sweat it. That's basically my summarization. He says, don't worry about it. He says, if you go to a place and they welcome you, amen, bless them, encourage them, put a, put a, put a blessing on that house. If they don't like you and they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet. And it would be more tolerable for, for, for Sodom and Gomorrah than for them. In other words, when people give you the word of God and you ignorant enough not to take it, you're in bad shape. When people give you a promise or a word that comes from God and you don't receive it, it's like an insult. It's like turning up your face, your hand in front of God. And so we've got to be careful about our attitude. I'm concerned about our attitude. The world is looking for the real children of God. I said the world is looking for the true manifestation of the sons of God. And if we ain't got it, I don't know what else to say. Here's a passage of scripture. Are you in Luke 10? Amen. Luke 10, the 10, uh, you, you ought to read the beginning of that because the, the disciples that were sent out in verse number eight, it says, whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things are set before you. Some of y'all would have problems with that. Uh, and heal this. I would have problems with that. I'm just not eating everything. Uh, verse number nine says, and heal there, and heal the what? Heal the sick there. Who is commanded to heal the sick? The ones that are sent. The ones that are sent. This is what he says, and heal the sick uh, there, and say unto them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. The kingdom of God has come near to you. Let me read on. Uh, but Whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near to you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Verse number 16. Look at verse number 16. Drop down. He who hears you, hears me. Okay. He who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. This is Jesus talking. And he who rejects me, rejects him that sent me. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Hallelujah. 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 Because you are sent from God, then the demons are subject to you. That'll give you a good indication as to whether or not you've been sent. Mm -hmm. This is a pause for us to think and reflect. It's called Selah. Just take a moment. If the demons are whooping your behind, then you might not be sent. If the demons have control of you and not you control over the demons, then you might check out your scent credentials. It's quiet in here. I, I expected it to be. Because all week I hear about demons whooping up on the saints, beating them down, depressed, dogmatic about things. I'm broke, I can't make it. Things are getting bad and they're getting worse. These are demons from the pit of hell. Amen. And when we are allowing the demons to have dominion, when we are supposed to what? Have dominion over them, then it's something wrong. Amen. It's something wrong. And so I challenge you to check out your credentials. Is the demons having its, its way with you or are you driving out every demon that comes across your path? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. I feel good about that thing. 
it's time to put a stop to demon activity. Amen. I said it's time to put a stop to demonic activity. Amen. You know what a de do y'all know what devils are? Amen. Devils are everything that is opposed to the kingdom of God. Yes. Everything that's opposed to the kingdom of God. And so when the scripture says that God has given us power, read verse number 19, Paige. Look at this, 10, Luke chapter number 10, verse number 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents. Behold, I give unto you, Jesus says to the sent ones, I've given unto you what? Power. 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 Somebody say power. power. Come on, say it like you mean it. Power. Power is an interesting word because it can mean two things. It can mean two things. Uh, the policeman that's standing on the corner directing traffic and you pull up to him and he does this, what does that mean? And does he have authority to stop my 250 pound, uh, my 2,000 pound vehicle? Huh? Does he have authority to do that? Does he have the power to do that? And if you don't stop, that's jail time. But does he, has, does he have the physical power to stop that vehicle? And so there are two things that are happening here when it comes to power. The scripture says that God has given us what? I said God has, hey, come on, talk to me. God has given us what? Power. God has given us power. But I think sometimes our power is on vacation because the demons are raging. Demons are raging. Demonic activity is just on a rampage. And it's because we're not recognizing the power of God working in us. Yes. Amen. Amen. How many got power today? Amen. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. How many got power today? Amen. He has given us power over what? Over the enemy. Over the enemy. What else? He has given us power over all. Everything that's not like God. He is, I said he's given us power, yes, power. authority. Yes. We, we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and what? Powers and what? Spiritual wickedness and what? Don't be trying to wrestle with the demon physically. It's not about a physical fight. It's about a spiritual fight. I just can't stop stealing. I just, I just have an issue. Pastor, you don't understand that it just comes over me and I just have to, you know, I got itchy fingers. That's a demon. That's a spirit. Amen. And if you continue to allow that spirit to take over you, you're going you're gonna to start a prison ministry. I don't know what came over me. I do. I do. The devil made you do it. My wife told me this long time ago. Romans chapter number seven says this. It talks about sin. And it talks about sin not being you. So many of us want to identify. We want to connect with sin. We want to be one with it. This is just who I am. Or it's, it's, it's a... Uh, uh, my arthritis. Have you ever heard anybody say that? My art, my surgeries. They got 13 surgeries and they claimed them all for them. My problem, my issue. It ain't your problem. It ain't your issue. It's a demon. And until you start what? Separating yourself from it. It is not, it is no longer sin, but it's sin that worketh in you. That's all I'm trying to get you to see. It's not you. I was a whoremonger. I said I was. I said I was. <laughs> 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 
and I couldn't control myself. I was out of control. I was out of control. And uh, I just didn't think I would ever stop. I thought it was just the way of life. I just did. I just thought it was, you know, this is what everybody do. You got to have two over here and another one on the other side of town. Don't say amen. Oh, yeah, somebody say amen, Paige. I was a mess. I was toe up from the flow up. I was a wreck. I was doing drugs and alcohol. I was just out there, out there. And they said, Charles, you'll take anything to get high. I said, well, I guess I will. And I recognized one day, one day that I was out of control. I recognized one day that I am no longer in the driver's seat. And I took great pride in my mental uh, fortitude. But my mind was gone. These people were going to jump on me, Laura, and I had not even figured it out yet. I was so messed up that they were, going to plot, they were plotting to kill me, and I didn't even see it coming. And it was at that moment that I said, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. The scripture here says that he has given us power over what? All. all. Somebody say all. all. All means what? Everything. All means all. If you take all of the cornflakes, it ain't nothing left. Somebody say all. all. God has given us power over what? All the what? All the what? Powers of the enemy. The enemy does not have any power. If, he, if God has taken what? And given us what? Power over all. Then what does the enemy have? And so why are we allowing him to have free course? Because you don't know what you have. You don't know what you have. I've come to the conclusion that we packing and the thing is still in our pocket. I come to that conclusion. We got authority over all the powers of the enemy and the enemy is just whooping you upside the head and you won't throw a punch. Say all. all. I told you that uh, we got issues. Didn't I tell y'all that? I said we got issues. And you know what an issue is? Is something that, that is killing you. The woman with the issue of blood, life was what? Life was flowing out of her every day. Every day. The issue of blood is life. And your issue will kill you every day. Your mindset will what? It will kill you every day. You continue with that same mindset, you're going to end up where? Dead. And so an issue is, I'm seriously sick of you every day. That's what an issue is. Y'all need to write that down if you don't have that because that, that'll help you. I'm seriously sick of you every day. When I was not saved, I had issues, Miss Becky. And I hated them every day. But you know what? I didn't have power. I didn't have power, Paige, to stop doing what I was doing. And so I'm here today, today to tell you about somebody that has given us power over all, I said all, all, all the power of the enemy. Turn to St. John chapter number three. St. John chapter number three. Verse number 16. I know most of you all can quote it, but I want you to see it. St. John three and 16 is a uh, uh, the, the culmination of a conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. Uh, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and Nicodemus is, is not really understanding what he's saying. And so what Jesus says to him is simply this, you gotta be born again. You gotta be born again. Nicodemus is seeking God and doesn't know that he's not born again. Do you, do you know that it takes God to even get you in a mind to seek him? 
You ought to thank God for you just being here today. Uh-huh. You ought to just, if, if he don't do anything else, you ought to thank him for just being here. You know why? Because it's God that gives us the motivation to hear about him. Put your finger in John 3 and 16 and go to 847. St. John 8 and 47. I said, I'm sent from God. How about you? Amen. I'm sent from God. St. John 8 and 47 is my watchword. It's my gauge as to whether or not you saved. Because everybody that say they saved, Paige, they just lying. Are y'all there? St. John 8 and 47. What's your name, brother? Devin, read that for me real loud. Stand and read because your voice carries when you read standing. St. John 8 and 47. Are y'all there? Did y'all hear that? Amen. He who what? He, what? He, he who hears what? Is what? And if you don't hear God's words, you are what? You are of the devil. Is, is, that, is that rocket science, y'all? Are y'all still with me? And so I can, I can test real quick whether or not you are of God. Cause all I got to do is what? I got to give you the word. And if the word says it, that settles it. Because there's something within you that agrees with that thing. But as long as you don't want to agree with it, you are, you're not of God. And if you're not of God, you're on the other side. And I didn't write this. I, I, I didn't write this. It's, 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 he said, what, read that again, Devin, one more time, because I didn't get it all. You're a good reader. Read. I said, read, Devin, not preach. Read, Devin. Emphasis. If you are of God, when people give you the word, you just what? You just what? You just receive it. You receive it. I ain't even obeying it, but I just what? I just know that this is the truth. And the truth is what's going to what? Yeah. He who is of God. They do what? And so if I give you the word and you are of God, then you're going to what? No, it's not just the hearing. It is the Hebrew understanding is receiving. And the word really means to take hold of. Uh-huh. And so if I give you the word and you are of God, then you what? You take hold of it. Read, Devin. It is very plain and it is very simple. You give somebody the word from God and they what? They receive it, they take hold of it, it's because God is in them. Thank you, Jesus. You give them the word, you give your wife the word, Paige. <laughs> Jay, uh, Ro uh, Gwen, uh, well, he that is of God. Do y'all hear that? Do y'all see that? This is how you tell whether folks are saved, Gwen. You give them the word and they just, they'll squirm. You know, it'll hit them and they'll, you know, it'll affect them a minute. But after a while, that thing, because if God is in you and, and you speak God to them, then what? Something ought to click there. Something ought to, 
turn to St. John 1 and 1. Same book, first verse. I, I need you to see this. This is why folks is of the devil, Lisey, because they're not, they not receiving the word. You give them word after word after word, and they're not receiving it. You know why? Because they can't receive it. They don't have God in them. It's quiet in here. Come to the conclusion that you're just lying. Yeah, you just lying. I'm a Christian. I'm on fire for God. I got God on the inside. I just don't receive that word. I just don't think that that's really true. St. John 1 and 1 says what? Yes, sir, read. Yeah, St. John 1 and 1 says what? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was what? The Word. The Word and the what? What else? The Word was with God. The Word was with God, and what else? The Word was God. And so God and the Word are one. Are, uh, do y'all agree with that? Amen. God and the word is what? And so when, when, when 847 says that when I give you the word, what am I giving you? Oh, y'all better talk to me. When I give you the what? The word, I'm giving you what? And when you reject the word, I'm tired of wrestling, you know, WWF with folk. Just, just, I got to go get help to wrestle with some of y'all over what is God. The word is God. St. John, let's stay right there. Six and 63. John 6 and 63. Y'all all right? So if I give you the word, I can tell whether or not you are of God, right? If I give you the word and you just want to do this to me, then I know that you what? Straight up from the pit of hell. Not of God. When you give your children the word and they do what? They what? I don't care how sweet they are. I don't care how they look like you. I don't care where they come from. If they don't receive the word, they are what? They rejecting not you. They rejecting what? They rejecting God. 6 and 63. What does it read? Can I get somebody else? Because uh, what's your name? Devin, you want to preach. Can I get somebody else? I'm preaching today. Tommy, read that. St. John 6 and 63. Given the spirit that quickens the flesh, profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. Can I make this clear? The words that Jesus speaks unto us are what? Spirit, spirit and they are what? Life. And so the opposite of that is also true. If a word somebody speaks to you does not give you spirit, does not make you alive, where is it from? The devil. It's not from God. And so why are you reading other folk mail? <laughs> why are you opening up other folks mail? It's not from God. If you walk away from a conversation and you just drain, need to go, to, go somewhere and lay down. You walk away from a conversation and you're edified. Yes. Yes. Somebody speaks a word to you and you are built up. Amen. You're on fire. You, you're, you're encouraged. It gives life unto you. It came from God. Amen. It came from God. But if you don't want to hear, I, I'm, 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 I'm through wrestling with you. I'm going to give you what the word says. And because you are not receiving the word, I know now that you are what? Ain't no, business, ain't no business arguing with you. You're just a devil anyway. <laughs> it's the truth. 
And this is time out for us wrestling. In, 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 in the Luke 10, in the early part of that thing, he said that if they receive you, they receive me. If they don't receive you, they are not receiving me. And neither are they receiving him who sent me. This is serious stuff, folks. Yes. You're either in or you're what? Out. You're either of God or you're what? Out. And we can tell whether or not you're of God. Right? right. All we got to do is give you the word and watch your reaction. Y'all still here? Amen. God so loved the world that he what? Gave. The, 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 the operative word here is gave. God gave. And you know what? God is still what? Giving. giving. God is still giving. God is merciful. He is long-suffering. He is gentle. But I got news for you that before the foundation of the world, he ordained us to be a part of the body of Christ. He, or, he ordained us to be a part of the family of God. He ordained us before you were even born. He said to Jeremiah, I called you. I said, before you were even a thought, I called you. And many of us have been called. I said, many of us have been what? Called. Many of us have recognized that God is where? In us. And he is calling us. The issue is whether or not we're going to answer the call. Or we're going to continue to turn a deaf ear to the call of God on your life. The reason why you are here today is because I don't have time to mess around with folk that are not of God. You're trying to twist their arm. You're trying to beg them. And they are devils. But if you can hear... Isn't that what it says? What is that? 8 and 47. What does it say? If you are of God, you hear God's words. When that word goes forth, you hear it. You grab it. You receive it. You take hold of it. Even when you're wrong. You identify with it because God is in you. I said God is in you. I said God is in you. If you can't identify with it, it's because what? God ain't in you. I love people to bring me the scripture. What does the scripture say? What is God saying? This is the issue. Now, I want you to see this. Where was I? St. John 3 and 16. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop with this. God so loved the world that he what? And what else does it say? He that what? He that believeth. What does that mean, English scholars? It means that you are what? Continually believing in him. He that believeth in him is what? The opposite of that is also true. You don't believe in God, you're dying and going to hell. You don't believe in God, you're dying and going to hell. He that believeth not is what? Condemned. Condemned. It's time out. I told y'all that the world outside of the church is getting more and more gray. You know, it's getting more and more, uh, uh, it's getting more and more that the world is, is not calling a spade a spade. Not calling black is black and white, white. Let me tell you one thing. It is trying to creep into the church where everything and anything goes. Amen. Honey, if you're not receiving the word, if you're not hearing the word, you're just a devil from the pit of hell. We hope that you get saved. All right. He that believeth is saved. He that believeth not is what? Damn. Damn. Condemned. And so many times people are not, they're trying to erase that part. You know, white it out. 
They trying to, they trying to act like that does not exist. Acts chapter number four, verse number 12. Acts chapter number four. Are y'all all right? Y'all? Yes. Eric, I had to tell you. Stop wrestling with people. Stop wrestling with folk. Stop wrestling with folk. They either saved or they're not. They either trying to get right or they're not. And if you can hear this, it's because you are of God. If you can hear this, it's because God is speaking to you. And I'm thinking about those, uh, uh, those folks in, in, uh, in Jeremiah where it was, a, it was all a graveyard full of folk. Graveyard full, dead bones, dry, crusty. You know what it's saying? It's saying that they have gone all the way back to their original state. The, the, the bones have become so brittle. And the prophet, God asked the man of God, can these bones live? Can, they, can this situation ever get turned around? I know some of us wrestle with whether or not God is with us because we so far to the left. We doing some stuff that is just wicked and we know it's wicked. I knew I was a sinner. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Or well, trying to act like they saved and they know they sinning. Yeah. Call a spade a spade. <laughs> if you practicing sin, you are of the devil. Just get saved. St. <laughs> John chapter number four, verse number 12. I'm sent to tell you this. I'm sent to tell you this. I said, I'm sent to tell you this. Amen. Stop wrestling with people. When you give them the word and they do what? Just know that they what? They're not of God. You can be nice and say they're, you're just not of God. <laughs> you're just not of God. You can be nice. Be nice with people. You tell people that they shacking and they in sin and they going to hell and they. <laughs> Shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. Yeah, shake the dust off your feet. You know why? Because the word is what? God. And when God gives you God, He's expecting God back. Is that clear? Acts chapter number four, verse number 12. What does it say, Devin? Can you read that for me? Okay, thank you. There is no other name among in the heavens given whereby we must be saved. The reference is what? Jesus. Jesus. Stan, Devin, let me give you one more scripture. No, two more. Two more. Acts chapter number two. Acts chapter number two. Chapter number two, verse number one. Read, sir. Uh huh. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them up. They were all in one place and on one accord. That, what that means is they were all thinking about the same thing. Amen. Amen. They weren't texting. <laughs> they weren't texting. Okay? I know all of y'all texting <laughs> ain't, 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 ain't got your Bible open. I, I know that. They were all in one place with one mind with one mind, thinking about one thing. And that's the power of God coming. 
And when we can all, Jesus even, he, he even begged us, if we can just get two of y'all. He said, if I could just get two, is, can I get three? Can I get just two? If I can just get two, I'll show up. He having problems with two of us getting together, agreeing. He having problems with that. Uh, 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 what's that brother's name that, that negotiated in the Old Testament? He, he, God was going to destroy the city, and, and he said, if I could just get Abraham. Abraham said, if I could, hold up, God. If I could just get 50, can I get 40? It went down to 10. And went down to 10 righteous people in the whole city. And Abraham said, what? I, I, got, I thought I had 10. That ain't funny. He got eight folk, and they had to run for their life. What is, what is he saying? If we could all get on one accord. One, what did the drum line say? One sound. One sound. We, we are so divided with our thinking. So divided. Now, salvation was in John 3 and 16. He said, he that believeth in me shall have everlasting life. Now he's talking about receiving power for your life. You can be saved with no power. Yes. Yes. On your way to heaven, just confessing Jesus, believing in God, et cetera, et cetera, and you can't take nothing from nowhere. And so you need power. I said you need power. I said you need power. You need the power of the Holy Ghost ruling and reigning in your life. And it's the Holy Ghost that will renew your mind that will change your attitude. You can't even receive the word and do the word without the Holy Ghost. Because your flesh is, is very much in the driver's seat. And it's the word and the Holy Ghost working in us that causes us to find ourselves obeying the word. Joshua 1 and 8 says that if you meditate on the word day and night, I said day and night, you may observe to do. It's going to come up and you're going to have the power to do it. You can't do the word without the power of God. At least these folks ain't saved. That's all I got to say. You don't want to hear the word. You ain't got no power to resist the devil. You can't rebuke a demon. You ain't saved. It is now time out for me to play with you. Time out. Recess is over. You either in or you out. It's either black or what? White. You either got power or you don't. When I went to Africa, they told me, now, Charles, if you go to Africa, you know, they are so accustomed to the the works of, of darkness, witchcraft, and they will manifest an orange in their hand. Witches and warlocks will manifest oranges in your hand, peel it, and give you some. <laughs> and if you call yourself a child of God and walking in the kingdom of light, you better be what? You better be packing. And so I didn't just tuck tail Laura and say, I'm not going. I said, Father, in Jesus' name, you sent me. That's the difference. You sent me, and so I, I went, I went. And sure enough, the woman starts squirming on the floor and all this kind of foolishness. I said, don't you, don't you even come close to me. Don't you even come close to me. And I took authority over that devil because I got the power of God resonating on the inside. I got the power of God. I got sick this last trip, Laura, coming home, I was dizzy. I had to grab Laura. I thank God for Laura. I was, I was dizzy. And every time I got dizzy, I started throwing up. Every time. And so, and so, um, and so, see, he's. So, um, 
they left me, you know, they dropped me at the airport and uh, I, I, I got out the car and I said, this is not a place, devil, to be throwing up. I'm not, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I said, I'm taking authority over that mess right now in Jesus' name. I don't know why I couldn't do that earlier. <laughs> I got out and I leveled myself, straightened out myself. I said, in the name, I'm not throwing up another time. And do you not know, I got on that plane and, the, and turbulence was in the air. I said, not, not today, not today. Where the bag? Yeah, I said, no, I'm not throwing up. When you know who you are in Christ. I said, when you know who you are in Christ. When you know the power of God resonating, resonating inside of you, then you start talking to the devil and stop letting him talk to you. He has given us power over what? All the power of the enemy and what? Nothing by any means shall harm us. I said nothing by any means shall harm us. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. I said no weapon. You know what he's saying? He's saying there are some weapons that are designed, tailor-made to form against you. Knowing your weaknesses because you told him. And the scripture says no weapon. I said no scheme, no device that is formed against you shall what? prosper. No weapon. No weapon. And we've got to make sure that we resignate that word. If you don't have power in your life, it's because you don't have the Holy Ghost. Every time I saw the mention of the Holy Ghost, they had speaking in tongues attached to it. It's mentioned nine times in the book of Acts. Every time people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I say it every time. There was tongues attached to it. Because when we take a baby, and this baby is born, I said, when we take a baby and this baby is born, and that baby does not what? We turn him upside down and do what? <laughs> because we looking for what? Come on, somebody. We looking for a sound. And I'm telling you, there's a sound from heaven that is coming. I said, there's a sound from heaven. When you are born again and spirit filled, I said, there's a sound. We checking out everything that ain't making a sound. Checking out everything. If you don't have power in your life, you might just want to check out whether or not you really got the Holy Ghost. Really, truly, uh-huh, sure. Because you can't stop this and you can't stop that, but you love Jesus. You, but you can't stop this and you can't stop that. You love Jesus, but you can't stop this and you can't stop that. You ain't got no power in your life. I would, but you don't have any power. So God wants to encourage you today. Get saved. If you're not saved, if you don't receive the word, Listen, I could, I could really check your salvation out today. Because I read that scripture in Hebrews 13 and 8. Miss Becky, what does it say? Yeah, Hebrews 13 and 8. Obey them to have the rule over you. I, that's our favorite scripture, Miss Becky. Yeah, 13, 17. That's, that's me and Miss Becky got a thing going on. Obey them to have the rule over you. What part of that do you not want to agree with? You know why you don't want to agree with it? Because you're not of God. You're not of God. Or you not of God today. Not today. Pastor, I love you, but I ain't doing that. That, that, that is interesting to me. That's interesting to me that the children can tell the parents where to go, what to do. 
Stand to your feet. I read a passage of scripture that says, stop giving them, and I'm paraphrasing it, stop giving them an excuse for sin. Stop giving them a cloak for sin. I'm going to have to give an account for you. I'm going to have to stand before God and say, well, Lord, they didn't like me. They didn't really like me. I didn't, they, they, they didn't like me. I, I, I wanted to tell them the truth, but I was afraid they was going to leave. I was afraid they wasn't going to like me. And you know what he's going to say? You are in trouble. <laughs> if you are not saved, just, hey, I, I was not saved. I was not saved. Where's my song? Let me just give this to you. Just a minute. Oh, he has his hands on you. Y'all ever heard that song? Yes. He has his hands on you. Before the foundation of the world, God has his hands on you. God decided that you were going to be set from him before you were even born. All your circumstances and situations, all your past, all your present is all wrapped up in the fact that God has his hands on you. I said God has his hands on you. I said God has his hand on you. It doesn't matter where you are, where you're going, where you come from. I said God has his hand on you. And you can squirm and squiggle and, and act like the fish on a hook. You can act all that if you want to. God still, what? I said God still has his hand on you. Why don't you just stop fighting? Stop resisting. Because the more the fish resists, what happens? You're a dumb fish. Oh, but I was, I was like that. I was like that. I was resisting God with everything within me. I was cool. I was sharp. I was just out of Vietnam. I was invincible. I was invincible. I thought I was all that and a bag of chips. I had a bunch of women. Just a bunch. Just a bunch, y'all just, you can fill in the blank. I was dropping all kinds of pills and doing all kinds of things, turning up my nose to God. But he had his hand on me. I said he had his hand on me. He had his hand on me. And Stevie Wonder interpreted God having his hand on me, he said, I'll be standing right here while you check it all out. He said, don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing. I'll, I'll, I'll stand right here while you get through checking it all out. I'll be what? I'll be right here. And I did. I checked it all out. I checked it all out. And I found out that he was what? And I came out with my hands up. I came out with my hands up. And I said, I surrender. I quit. I'm tired. The song says, he said he'll see you through. And when you cry, He's holding you. He's holding you. You ought to give your life to God today. I said you ought to give your life to God. Stop resisting the word because you're resisting God. And just allow him to put his arms around you. Because he what? He, 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 does not, he does not miss. If he got his hand on you, you can sin because you know he gives you power to sin. You did know that, don't you? If you in sin, it's because God gives you breath to sin. Are y'all hearing me? And he'll be right there waiting while you check it all out. While you check it all out. Why not make a decision today? 
that I'm going to give my life to Jesus. I'm going to stop resisting the word. I'm going to give my life to him. And if you'll do that, it'll be the best day of the rest of your life. I said, God has been faithful. For 38 years, God has been faithful. Don't worry about it. God is big enough to handle your issues, my issues, our issues, and see you through, and see you through. If you're here today, come on, stop playing around. If you're here today and you know you're not right with God, or if you know that there was a time in your life that you were closer to God than you are right now, you know what, that's backslid. I remember when I was closer to God than where I am right now. You ought to run. You ought to run. Because it's time to get it right. It's time to get it right. Glory to God. It's time to get it right. And all you got to do is make one step. And God runs, the scripture says. He ran. When the prodigal just looked that way. The father ran to him and caught him and embraced him and wrapped his arms around him. Glory to God. I said he has his hands on you.